To wrap up the day, um, well, I want, to reckon, I want to recognize, thinking back to Vicky's words at the beginning, recognize the researchers and the healthcare workers who um, have often accepted f physical and emotional risk to do this work. And I talk about the emotional risk, uh, including the, the stress and the exhaustion and, and, uh, of dealing with the events they're dealing with all the time. And doing this work is, uh, is often done at night or at weekends. It's often people in the field uh, managing to put in extra time to actually, in addition to their day job, let's say, uh, manage to actually do these analyses and contribute to quality of care for current and future patients. So uh, I think um, we, you know, we're at a time uh, as MSF when we're starting to reflect on the coming years, the next uh, strategic plan cycle, as we call it. And, uh, and I suppose today's uh, presentations left me with quite a few questions. I think that's often the way with science. It, uh, it, 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 uh, it seems it will give us answers. It also raises just as many questions. And, and so I wanted to share just a couple of these questions with you. Um, uh, maybe many people will be asking the same questions as we think about the coming years. So I think the first one for me was, was is who will our patients be? And I think as both uh, Adil Najam and uh, David McCoy pointed out, um, now more than ever, this, the slow, insidious suffering due to bad policy, extreme inequality, greatly outweighs the number of deaths and suffering due to immediate physical violence. So I guess as we look forward in the coming years, who are our patients, who will they be? To what extent will we be looking at the extreme, marginalized, excluded populations, not just in, in conflict settings, but uh, those, uh, those populations, the slum workers, victims of coercive or hazardous labor practices, prison, prison inmates without access to TB care, and pregnant women, which maybe seems a group that we've always tried to focus on. And yet, as we saw today, they remain victims of structural barriers to care. And how much has changed since, since we have started working and providing maternal child health services? And the second question I, I, I was thinking on is, is, what will we offer? What, we, what will we continue to offer? I th clearly, as we see today, we will continue to offer excellent health care. We will strive to offer excellent health care and innovative care. And we will keep on trying to challenge ourselves and, and develop new approaches, simplified approaches, approaches that, approaches that can reach more people. But also, will we focus on the gaps? Because we, we, we focus a lot on saving lives. But we also talk about restoring dignity and reducing distress. And given that we think more and more about how can we be patient-centered, I, I want to just think back to Lee's challenge to us about palliative care and how little we include that in our programs at the moment. And could we be doing more on that? Because where, where better does patient-centered care, restoring dignity, relieving suffering come together than in palliative care? And then the third and final question I wanted to leave us with is, I suppose, is the question still about what role will our research play? So I won't repeat everything that Claire said this morning, but uh, I just th think about the, these scientific days, which were established to bring evidence from field programs to challenge and improve the care we provide. And as both, uh, uh, as two medical directors reminded us today, our research needs to be purposeful. This can be part of a change agenda to influence policy. And we've seen some excellent examples of that in the last panel. It can be to understand and improve individual field programs, which often has knock-on effects on other programs, of course. And these, uh, as is the, in the case of, uh, of the diphtheria presentation, but also the postnatal clubs from this morning, which were set up to address a very real problem in that setting, but obviously have implications beyond. But research can and should also be part of our bearing witness, demonstrating unmet needs, unacknowledged suffering, to draw attention to and to affect political change and political response to some of these situations. And I think the, the word used there was responsibility. We need to ask ourselves, is it our responsibility? What responsibility are we willing to take in those contexts? So I, I leave you with uh, Anthony Costello's challenge uh, uh, in the age of adaptation to climate change. Can we or will we do more, in, whether it's mobilizing, agitating, in the face of bad policy, healthcare exclusion, and other forms of structural violence, of which we are witness to the effects on a daily basis. So I leave it at that, because now the 10 minutes are up and the doors are going to be open. So everyone can go out for a drink. But please join us tomorrow for the Innovation Day. This is one of a series of events culminating in the Southern Africa and the South Asia days. So we'll be back here 9 o'clock tomorrow morning.
Thank you very much.